Hey everyone, Mr. MC here. This is a guide for round 5 of the 2021-2022 FIA Nations Cup Exhibition Season taking place at Fisherman's Ranch with the Group B cars. And before I get started, I need to mention that the car settings are somewhat adjustable. You can adjust the power and weight ratio. So what I did, I simply just put the power to max and the weight reduction to the lowest value for the Ford Mustang and of course you can do this with the other cars whichever car you feel the most comfortable with. Another thing is that if you go to the multi-function display by pressing the left or the right you can adjust the brake balance and you can see here that I have the brake balance at minus two and you can also adjust the torque distribution in which I have it at 50-50. So the power will equally be distributed to both the front and rear wheels. But let's go ahead and get this started. Once again, I'm in the Ford Mustang Group B car. There is a lot of throttle control that you need to use with these kind of cars with this much power. But let's first start to slow down before you reach the white banner. So brake as much as you can for a while. Slowly ease off of the brakes as you turn in and do lots of throttle control. You can see I'm just letting go of the throttle to try to gain a bit of traction, get the car to turn in and try to accelerate without getting too much wheel spin. Left off of the throttle just as you make the jump and just as you pass this track marshal on the right, that's when you want to start to slow down. So use some of your braking power, bring us up towards the right. Lots of throttle control. That's the name of the game here at Fishman's Ranch. And just as you start to make this right turn, that's when you want to start to ease on the brakes. Just try to gradually slow down, keep control of the car, and carefully accelerate your way through. Then bring yourself a bit towards the left. Brake just as you pass the Pirelli signs that are on the left. Just use some of your braking power. Just get the car to go towards the right side of the track. Just being easy on the throttle to try to get what little traction you can get on this dirt surface. Turn in just a little bit later than I do so you don't hit the barrier that is on the right. Left off of throttle again as you make the jump. And just as you pass the sparkle signs on the left, that's when you want to start to ease on the brakes. Be a little careful here so you don't turn in too early and hit the barriers. Brake before you pass the happy little tree that is on the right. You want to get as close as you can to the barriers. A lot of throttle control needed here to try to get a bit of traction, get the car pointing where you want to go. Brake before you pass this little tree again. Once again, more throttle control. You need a lot of it through these hairpins. You can even go up a gear so you can try to get a bit less wheel spin. Brake pretty early here before you pass the group of cars. Just trying to turn in as much as you can, trying to not get any sort of wheel spin so you don't end up sliding around, not go anywhere. This part's really dangerous. Point to the right of this tree because you want to make sure that you don't hit the barrier that is sticking out on the left. If you try to go too wide through that jump, that's going to spell disaster. But anyways, just left off our throttle before you make the jump. A bit of throttle control so you don't hit the barriers and then brake before you pass these signs that are on the left. You may end up going into a bit of a slide, but don't worry. That'll help the car turn a bit more. Careful on the throttle so you can try to get a bit of that traction, get the car moving towards the direction you want to go. Brake before the tree. Once again, get it into a slide and then carefully get on the throttle so you can try to get a bit of traction, get the car going where you want to go. Then you're going to want to lift off of the throttle just before you make this jump so you don't end up flying into heaven. Brake before you pass the sign that is on the right. Be careful with your turn in so you don't end up hitting the inside of the barrier. Just try to be a little careful on the throttle input. Once again, just trying to get that bit of traction possible. And you can brake before you pass the flag that is on the left. You can brake just a little bit later if you want to be sure that you don't hit the inside barrier. Then slow down just before the barrier on the left goes from orange to white. Just try to be careful on the throttle. Get that little bit of traction that you can get. 
Left alpha throttle as you go to this left turn so you don't hit the wall on the right. Lift off our throttle once more before you make the jump and then brake before you pass the GoPro sign that is on the left. Braking as much as you can, just trying to get the inside line, trying to get a bit of traction. You don't want to slide around too much. Use lots and lots and lots and lots of throttle control. And that is pretty much it for the lap guide. Now for the strategies, I'm actually going to go back to a rally race that we had earlier this year. So you might recognize this. This was Group B at Sardinia Windmills because the way that this race went is pretty much going to be very similar or even identical for the Fisherman's Ranch race. So I'm going to refer to this video a lot because what happened here is going to heavily apply for this upcoming race as well. So in the Fisherman's Ranch race, you're going to have six minutes to try to get a good qualifying time. So you'll have one, or if you're really lucky, two chances to try to get the best qualifying time possible. I cannot stress this enough. Qualify far away from everyone else, especially with a big track like Fishman's Ranch. You want to qualify very far away from everyone else because the last thing you want to do is to be on a really good lap that could potentially get you pole position and you got too close to someone in front of you because you didn't get yourself far, any, far away from everyone. You got too close to someone and guess what? Now they're in your way. You have to try to get around them. You're going to lose a lot of time and before you know it, you lost pole position. So when you do your qualifying lap, you just want to make sure that you're very far away from everyone else. I know I've said this about 200 times at this point, but I just want to really make that point clear. You want to focus on getting every single turn at Fisherman's Ranch now down. You don't want to have to worry about getting too close to anyone and having to slow down because you're about to hit them or whatever. Yeah, just qualify far away from everyone else. That's basically all that is to it for qualifying because qualifying is basically half of the battle. And I'm still gonna keep showing clips from this race because what happened here is going to really apply to the Fisher's, Fisherman's Ranch race that's going to be coming up soon. And it's going to be really difficult to get any sort of overtaking done. You have to get really aggressive to even get a pass done. You can even see Lester, he was trying to get himself in there to try to take my spot. And it's just really difficult. So you're going to have people get really aggressive you may have to get aggressive yourself. So you're just going to have to just try to do your best to make sure that you don't get taken advantage of, but at the same time, make sure that you're able to take advantage of others and potentially pick up a spot or two. Yeah, just like over here, I made a mistake and Lester is going to try to go for the move. We're actually going to end up door banging each other. Yeah, get, get ready for that kind of aggression because that's going to be a thing in this race, especially if there's a lot of you that are within a similar pace. But as I go on with this clip, so the Fisherman, Fisherman's Ranch race, which I somehow cannot pronounce now, it's a five lap race and fuel tire wear is a time zero, so you don't have to worry about that sort of stuff. This is an all out race where it's basically all about survival and try to make sure that you don't screw yourself over and to take advantage of others. That's basically it. You even saw right now, I made a little mistake. I left the door open. Lester took advantage of that and he made me take some really crazy lines. But anyways, in terms of what cars to go for this race, it's honestly going to be the car that you're most comfortable with, assuming that you have max power and minimum weight. So for example, with me, I tried the Ford Mustang the Lancer Evo, which is what you're seeing right now, and the Toyota 86. All of them were at maximum power, minimum weight, and I felt very different using each of the cars. So in the 86, I actually felt really lousy with it. In the Lancer Evo, I felt all right with it, but I ended up being the fastest in the Ford Mustang. For you, that may not be the case with the Ford Mustang. That may be your slowest car, but you may be much faster in a car like the Toyota 86. So there 
yeah, there isn't exactly a meta car. It's going to depend more on which car you feel the most comfortable driving with. Because for one person, the Toyota 86 may be the car that they're the most comfortable and they can be the fastest with. But for someone else, the Lancer Evo may be the car that they're the fastest with and the 86 may just not work out for them. So I say that because I've been taking a look at the top 10 in the time trials. I've been seeing a whole bunch of cars, so I see some people using the Toyota 86, some people using the Lancer Evo. I'm in the Mustang, someone was in the Genesis, someone was in the NSX, another person in the WRX. Basically what I'm trying to say is that use the car that you are the most comfortable with. You don't have to use the quote unquote meta car since there isn't exactly one for this race. If you are comfortable using the Lancer Evo, use that car. If you're comfortable using the 86, use that car. Whichever car you're the most comfortable with, just use that car. And that's basically it for the guide. But yeah, um, in terms of overtaking, all I'm going to say is good luck because there isn't exactly a good place to go for an overtake. You basically just need to get the best exit of your life. Chances are that people will screw up their exits so you can easily take advantage of them. So it's going to be extremely situational when it comes to overtaking. And yeah, that's basically it. This race was really frustrating to do um, for the recording. So yeah, that's basically it for me. This video is going off for too long. So I'm going to go ahead and cry to sleep because this this combination was so frustrating. Like, yeah, <laughs> I spent three hours on this and I only got a 305. I mean, I, I know I could do better, but oh well. But anyways, that's all for me. Hopefully this guide helps you out in any way, shape or form. This is Mr. MCA wishing you a good race and I'll see you in the next video.